Sure. Um, won't have much exact detail for you on it. They haven't played a game yet and will not have played a game, ironically, until we play. Uh, it's a new coach, uh, a friend of mine that I've known for a long time, so I know what her tendencies were when she was the head coach back at McNeese State and during her days at Alabama. But uh, she's got a lot of newcomers, uh, so it, it, it's going to be kind of uh, – kind of tough to tell uh, what we're going to be getting with Monroe, but uh, it'll be a preparation. It's a lot about what we've learned over our, about ourselves for the last four games, uh, cleaning up some things offensively, uh, continuing to improve defensively. It'll be a lot about us when it comes to Monroe. I know they will play incredibly hard. She will have a game plan and they will execute whatever they come up with. She is a schemer. Uh, there'll be some, maybe we haven't seen yet. And one of the reasons we played them, um, and you just want me to stop and then go to Baylor or open with both of them? Uh, yeah, let's stop there. Stop I'll take there. ULM first and then we'll yeah. do another for Baylor. Good luck, oh, go uh, ahead. Good luck formulating the question out of that. <laughs> Paul, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll start uh, I'll start this way. Then, then what did you feel like you learned about your team this weekend? Two or three things that stood out that, you know, maybe positives and a couple of things you got to work on and get better with. Well, we're in great shape. To have played four games in five days, it's asking a lot of any athlete during a normal year, much less during the type of year we had. Uh, I think we learned that we've still got some growth. We were not rested on that last day, and it showed uh, in, in our pace. Uh, we weren't able to run with a team that, that we would have normally liked to have run with. We couldn't keep up with them. Uh, Maryland was phenomenal. But we were really tested in those first two games, a really good Wake Forest team that you know showed how good they were as the tournament went along and then a Gulf Coast team that we knew was going to challenge us. So we are in good shape, not good enough to shape to play five games and uh, four games in five days, but we're never, ever, ever, ever going to have to do that again. Um, so we learned that. Uh, we learned that we've got, um, I think, uh, some, some quality depth. Um, Aaron Barnum continues to play great. Marquisha Davis and Jalen Mason um, gave us some really, really valuable minutes uh, during the course of that, that tournament down there. Uh, you know, as far as our, our, our starters, we're learning where the shots are going to come and how they're going to come. We always struggle with that a little bit early in the year on, on what's the best shot, what's a good shot, and could we have gotten a better one. And we haven't had a chance to watch film because we went straight from a game to travel to play, 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 prep, play. So we haven't been able to show them on film. Hey, yes, this is a good shot, but wow, turn around and look right behind you. Better. Chelsea's standing right there or Slocum's standing right there. And we get better at that. So we, that's, that's an area we've got to improve on is taking our good shots and making them great shots. Um, and then, you know, continued focus on the boards. Uh, we, we, got, um, we got up against an opponent that can beat you by doing that, and, and that's what happens when, when we don't guard and they can rebound. Seth, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, you uh... – you mentioned uh, after the game, I believe that was on Sunday, that you haven't had just a lot of time to uh, just be together as a team. You know, everything's just different yeah. with uh, COVID-19. How are you game planning to kind of overcome that and get people just together? Um, well, first of all, we're not going to get them together because that's still not an option. You know, it, it, it sucks. And even though we were in this tropical, beautiful resort place, we couldn't go ride jet skis and, you know, watch the alligator. We, we can't. Um, so I think continuing to talk about it and then value the moments that we are able to be together. We've got to place more value on the time that we can be together um, because there, there's not going to be additional. It, it's going to keep getting harder and harder, I think, with the, in these holidays that we all play through. You know, it sucks – every year to have to play during Thanksgiving and Christmas. But now this year that we, we can't do those with our parties to enjoy. I think we got to said, I think to answer your question, we've got to value the few moments that we do have together. That bus ride is short and, and you've got to value that very, very quick time. Uh, there's a few minutes in the locker room. You cannot waste one time. You can't waste time. And that's what I found myself being very guilty of is, is wasting some time that we have. You can't waste an opportunity. You can't waste time because there's not going to be more. There's not going to be more of it. We're it maybe less and less. So um, the time that we do to get them together, it's got to be very, very well spent, uh, and it's got to be appreciated and valued. That's for sure. Russell, go ahead. Is there any worry with the focus on ULM with what's coming up this weekend? Do you worry about that at all? 
if we hadn't got our butts handed to us, it would have been like if we'd have probably won that game or uh, I think, yeah, focus would have been a concern looking forward to the Baylor game. But I think being able to, to draw it back and, and say to them, we don't, we don't have film so that you're not going to see any. Let's just focus on us. We're going to watch film today, socially distanced uh, in a big arena, but we are going to watch it and they're going to see the, the good, better, best stuff, which so – the fact that we're going to focus on us these next two days and then the day of the game, we'll, we'll get what we can of a scout. I think we'll alleviate that concern. Um, they were very, uh, they, they, you know, our, our group has always been blessed with a little bit of self-awareness of, of what everything means and what it doesn't mean sometimes. And, and it stung to lose the way we lost, but it didn't linger. It didn't carry over to the plane ride. It hadn't carried over to today in rehab. Uh, it, it's helped us. Um, I think we learned from our wins, but you, you always learn a little bit more from your loss. So I, I think we will be – I think you'll see the most focused team that we've had yet on Thursday. Brett, go ahead. Mike, I want to come back to you. mentioned your starters just learning where the shots are going to come from. And I wouldn't say this to any other coach, but I can you. So when I was in college going to Old Country Buffet, I'd walk in with the intent to do damage. And yeah. You, by the steak and you could eat and then you see the taco station and then you go get pie and then you go get ice cream it felt like in that, that first game it's like I could shoot a three or I could pass to somebody else and maybe it's their turn to shoot a three and it, it just felt it felt off and I don't know how the last three games played but it it had that Brett old country buffet where I can go in a hundred different directions but I'm not sure which one I want to go to yeah and and this this may sound funny but this is true I, I heard Gino R.E.M. talk about this I'm, I'm worried they're being too unselfish, to be honest with you. Like, nobody wants to be that person. But what they've got to understand is from game to game, you might have to be that person that night. Because we – the team's prepping too. They got a game plan, and they're going to guard us this way. And, and that's why we've always used that term, we got to make them wrong. We, we got to – if they're going to shut down the uh, pizza line, the pizza side over there, well, then you're going to have to eat more salad tonight. <laughs> And if there's a lettuce, a lettuce shortage at the buffet like it is at Arby's right now, then you're not going to eat salad. you got to eat more uh, taco salad, tacos or, or whatever. We have to learn that you can't dictate. You just play. You do your role. And over the course – and we're going to have that conversation today. We haven't had a chance to do it. We always do about four or five games in. But if, if you look at a game-by-game -game basis, shot distribution could, could be very skewed. But it, over the course of a season, it's going to work out. And they have to see that and be talked about it. And uh, But but we had, you know, Dungey turned down a wide open three the other night. Y'all ever seen that happen? You know? And, and it was because she, you know, she felt like she'd missed a shot before. I said, what in the world are you doing? They We created a wide open catch and shoot, which, by the way, she nailed. That was the game winning shot against Florida Gulf Coast. That's exactly what we do. She's in rhythm. Michaela pitched it to her. She caught it. She nailed it. She turned down that exact same shot the next day. That's a shot she'll see today that you shoot every single time. Uh, Slocum would drive it into the paint, and she – this happened during a timeout. Um, all during preseason, Slocum and Mack have been guarding each other. And there's times when Slocum just punks Mack and takes it to the rim and, and scores. And I said, Slocum, why in the world are you not doing that to that poor girl over there on the other team when you've done it to Mac all preseason? Mac goes, yeah, right, Slocum, why not? So I, I, we've got to have those moments. And it's new for Destiny. She's trying to fit in on a team with great players. And these guys are trying to help her fit in. So we just got to learn what that good, better, best is. And we have had – and I've given them zero opportunities to this point. I apologize to them in the locker room after the game for asking them to do something that was incredibly hard, but they appreciate doing hard things. They say, coach, it's okay. We're good. We want to do hard things. But, you know, I saw where Charlie cream just put out on ESPN that we have the hard, one of the hardest schedules in the country, you know, and we're asking them to do something incredibly hard under incredibly hard circumstances. But I don't think this group would have appreciated us had we not. So we've got to learn to live with that. Hey, we're doing hard things. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be, you know, puppy dogs and rainbows and unicorns every single day here where there's going to be some hard moments and um, that's going to make us better for it, I think. Uh, Jacob, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind. Mike, just wanted to introduce myself real quick. I'm the new sports director at Five News. So just 
happy to awesome. be working with you guys. But uh, so it's pretty unusual for a team going into their fifth game to be playing a team who hasn't played a game yet this year. How can you take advantage of that, especially against a team who is playing for the first time under a new coach to, for you guys to control the, the tempo right from the, the beginning of the game? First of all, welcome to this group. Get ready. Watch the guy over in the bottom left. He'll screw you with you on chairs and pranks. And uh, there is no telling with what's going to go on with this group when we get back in person. So uh, just warning you. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. The guy looking around, that guy. Uh, welcome, first and foremost. Uh, hopefully, we'll learn what we learned. You know, we were a little rusty that first day, and it took some time. We won't give them that time. As much as that Daryl's my friend, she's great, great coach. We're not going to be very good friends at two, whatever time we play. Take advantage of what we learned in our first, you know, four games and make sure that, that they sense that too. They get that same opportunity to learn. Um, our pace has got to be there from the get-go and, and force them to do what we want, dictate it. We got to dictate to them. So we got to take advantage of those jitters. Now they should be rested. They'll have some excitement. Uh, we've got to use that against them, you know, and, and I think we'll uh, be able to do that if we, these next two days, our focus on ourselves is right. But try to make them experience the same things that we did when we played ORU. All right. Does anyone have any follow up questions about ULM on Thursday? Okay, with that, we will go ahead and shift gears to Sunday's game against Baylor. Coach, you want to talk a little bit about that one before we take questions? Um, yeah, a long time in, in waiting for this one. We've been excited about it for a long time, so glad it's finally about here. Um, you know, we've done a lot of um, preparations and trying to promote it for crowds, so it's just to get that game here. Um, it does mean a lot to have a defending national champion come into our place and represent the SEC in that challenge. Um, lots of different things that it means, but in, in, in the biggest picture, when you boil it down, these kids that we promised if they came here, we would be able to attract big games. Now we got evidence that that's the case. Uh, here is the defending national champions playing you on your home floor. Um, check that box for what it is. Now let's go out and, and see how we stack up against the team that's you know, in the top five in the country right now in everybody's polls. All right, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, uh, one thing I'll start with, I mean, are they, are they somewhat similar to a Maryland with, some, with, with size inside and also being able to shoot the ball and, and defense? What, what one facet sticks out when, when you look at the Baylor Lady Bears? Their balance is what sticks out. They can beat you a lot of different ways, Paul. They, they can beat you from the yard. They, they, they build from the inside out. That is a, that is a Kim Mulkey uh, staple. They're, they're going to build, but you cannot not guard them at the perimeter. Uh, very similar to Maryland. Uh, I don't know that they're as deep as Maryland, but that doesn't matter if you only are going to play. She's got some injuries. I don't know the status of D.D. Richards or Queen Egbo. Uh, they play again tonight. They play South Florida tonight. So we'll get maybe a little bit clearer picture there. But, you know, even against UCA and um, I think they played one other one, maybe that seemed like they're they're uh, They don't have that depth uh, that they've had in the past, but it's not going to matter. She can play just six. I've seen her play six kids and all six of those kids will be tremendously talented. Uh, and you know, if Dee Dee Richards is back, she had a, they had a really bad uh, collision that uh, her and Moon Urson had earlier in the year. So uh, we'll see what we find out tonight, but we'll prepare like, you know, they've got their best lineup possible, but it would be a similar uh, matchup to what we saw against Maryland. Um, if, you know, I, I don't know anybody shoots it like Maryland did that night. Uh, they made it, they, they, it was fun to probably watch. There wasn't any fun to coach, but um but Baylor is certainly capable of doing the exact same thing. So good that we get those two tests on back-to-back -back Sundays. See if we've improved. Seth, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, what do you work on to improve from Maryland to Baylor? Well, I, we got our head down, man. I, if, I don't know if anybody watched it, but we got, we got punched and we got our head down a little bit, got away from things we, don't, like, we just don't even do. And that's what today's film session is all going to be like. Who is this? Which team was this? You're throwing it to places that we never throw it to. Um, we're doing things defensively. We just really – I think it demoralized us a little bit. So, we got to get past that. Because there's going to be other teams that can do that to us. 
and we can't let a 10 point deficit balloon to where it got to 25 or 30 at one point. So, um, you know, learn to be resilient against the quality team, understand that going in too, um, that that's, that's a possibility, you know, and when it starts to arise, you, you don't get down 10, you, when you're down five, you cut it back to three or you're down seven, you keep it around five hanging around and giving yourself a chance will be something um, that it may not happen to better. Maybe we get up, we keep the lead. I don't know. But learning from that, uh, the way that Maryland did it to us, learning how it felt and not letting it happen again. Russell, go ahead. It's kind of disappointing that you got to play by the COVID restrictions on, on crowd size and, you know, like to see what you could get in there for this game. Yeah, I've already lost a bet to Coach Blair. I told him we were going to beat the 14,004 from back in the uh, Wisconsin NIT days. Uh, so I lost that bet. I, I mean, I tried to I tried to get out of it like any person would do, but he sold me to it, and that's fine. Um, yeah, I, it is a little bit of uh, not disappointment, but it's just it's what 2020 has been. It's just it just makes sense. Um, whoever's able to get in there, I, I do think we'll, we'll fill it up with the legal amount. I really do. Um, but it is, it is going to be always a wonder of what it could have been like. No question. Um, I, I wouldn't lie to you and tell you that, but we're, we're going to do like we have with everything else, try to make it the best environment we can. But I really do believe the way our fans had started supporting us and coming out and talking about it from the time that the game was announced. I, I really think we would have been close to the capacity for that game. What did you lose to Coach Blair on the bet? Uh, we have a running bet from, um, I guess, since 1999. Uh, he's a Diet Coke guy, so I've got to supply Diet Cokes the next time that we play golf. I'm not anywhere near even because he won't take a bet. If I make a bet that's in my favor, he won't take it. But I'm expected to take every bet that he makes. You know how that goes? So there's not really been a fair bet in a long, 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 long time. So, but I still feel like I get the better end of that deal because he's, he's pretty cheap. You know, y'all know how tight these days. Brad, go ahead. Mike, I would imagine for a number of years, Pat Summit was considered the top of the women's basketball coaching ranks. And then Gino had his run and then maybe Muffet had a couple of years. And now it would probably be Kim that's at the top of that that women's basketball hierarchy, the Mike Krzyzewski, the Bill Belichick. Do you enjoy even just thinking about a head-to-head -head matchup with her? Does that even enter your brain at all, just coaching against someone who's won a couple of national championships and trying to beat them? I don't enjoy it, no, not at all, because I know um, I know how intimidating she is. She scares me with that, her intimidation. She, and she's, she's not trying to be. That's just who she's as nice as can be. But she is a competitor now. And I'll tell you this right now. You pull out those resumes and you stack them up side by side, okay? And take away the 11 – I get it. Geno's 11 national championships glare and jump off the page at you. But look at Kim's playing career. Look at her assistant coaching career. Look at her USA basketball career. There's nobody in the game that's got that. Pat Summit didn't have it. Geno wasn't a great player. Um, Muffet was good on a great team. Um, and then to have done it at Baylor, I mean, I remember sitting in Coach Blair's office. We played Baylor right before Kim got there and when she first got. We played him in the NCAA tournament. Uh, 2001, 2000 or 2001, we played at Duke. I remember it. Uh, beat him in the first round. And I remember thinking, we better enjoy this one because there's not going to be many times you beat this team because they're coming. Um, and, and to do what she's done, it's, you know, I certainly appreciate it. I certainly respect it, but it doesn't, I don't enjoy coaching and recruiting against her. She's tough. She's hard nosed. Um, I feel, I feel very inadequate uh, when I'm in a conversation with somebody that's got her resume, but certainly is an honor to play against them. Um, but it's, it's not any fun whatsoever. And she scares me too. I would agree with it, it, It's just that she, like I said, she, we, she called me the other day. We're talking about – she still thinks I have a grandbaby, but we got that cleared up. It's not a grandbaby. I, she thought it was a grandbaby, so I got that cleared up with her. Fact, She has one. Her daughter has a child. So we got that cleared up uh, ahead of time. But, uh, no, she's, she's a huge part of 
Uh, and she's, a, you know, she's from this area. It's good to see. She's always recruiting in Arkansas. And then, you know, bringing Satya back home. You know, Satya Messer's on that bench over there with her. So um, it will be a fun game, but it's not a um, not going to be a fun lead up. Jacob, go ahead. Uh, such an exciting game for you guys, especially being on ESPN2. But how do you assure that your group doesn't look ahead to Sunday and keep their focus one game at a time? This group has had played enough big games now. That's not even an issue. They, they've been in big games, been in the finals of the SEC tournament, been in semis, been in, they, they've been there. And, you know, Slocum's been to three Sweet 16s. Chelsea and Amber have played USA basketball. Uh, Michaela, it, you know, I don't – that kid's unfazed by anything. So, um, Jalen Mason's a veteran. Uh, you know, Marquisha and, Am and Aaron will be new for them, but – you know, if you're looking at our top eight, six of those kids have been in equally as big games. They've been on featured. They've been asked to do things now. Um, and I think they just want to please everybody so bad. They want it so bad for our fans. They want to be that group that does something that's legacy type leaving. Um, and, and they don't know how many opportunities they're going to get, you know, with COVID. And this is a huge opportunity. So I know it places a lot of uh, expectation on themselves, but I don't worry about them it being too big for the moment. Um, they have each other too. They've got each other to talk to about it and draw from common experiences. And um, I think that's something that, um, you know, it's hard to coach a bunch of seniors because they've been there and they've done a lot of things, but it comes to moments like this where you're glad you do have a bunch of seniors. All right. Does anyone have any follow-ups on Baylor for Sunday? All right, that'll do it. We will see you guys out here on Thursday night.